but it's Biden versus Trump. Uh, yes, we know that. It what, is. Uh, it is. What do you what do you say to voters who are upset that those are the two choices? Get over yourself. Those are the two choices. Yeah, yeah I love that. Right? And yeah, and good. you know, it's kind of like one is old and effective and compassionate, yeah. has a heart, and really cares about people, and one is old and has been charged with 91 felonies. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I mean... Uh, okay, interesting. <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't, I don't understand why this is even a hard choice, really. I yeah. don't understand it. Yeah. But we have to go through the election, and hopefully people will realize what's at stake because it's an existential uh, question. I, what kind of country we're going to have, what kind of democracy we're going to have. And people who blow that off are not paying attention because it's not like... Trump, his enablers, his empowerers, his allies are not telling us what they want to do. I mean, they're pretty clear about what kind of country they want. Yeah. Yeah. So. Get out there and vote. Yes. Now, these people who are on the fence, what are you thinking? This is what Hillary's trying to say to people. What are you thinking? There is no choice here. You have a man, Joe Biden is a good person. He understands grief. He's lost a child. He's lost two children. He lost a wife. He, he's compassionate. He feels for Americans. I, this guy, he's a psychopath. Yeah, but I think what Hillary... All right, guys. So we got to talk about Stephen A. Simp. I know, I know, I know. Another Stephen A. Simp video. But hey, this guy is making his rounds and he's talking about topics that are interesting to say the least, okay? Even though Stephen A is very Trump deranged. I know a lot of people are misreading Stephen A in regards to what his real intentions are, but there is some truth to the things that he's saying, especially in regards to criticisms of the Democrats. Now, where are the criticisms coming from? They're coming from this place of wanting Democrats to do better because he doesn't want Trump to win, right? This is why he's saying the things that he's saying, not because he's a Trump supporter, like a lot of people are misinterpreting. And he has continued this by going on CNN and trashing Hillary Clinton in the recent comments that she made on the Jimmy Fallon show where she basically trashed potential Biden voters who are still undecided, right? Voters that are saying, hey, you know what? I'm not necessarily sure about Biden or Trump. OK, uh, she basically said, look, you need to get over it. Right. And just fall in line and vote for Joe Biden. Right. This is what she said. And Stephen A. Smith had a problem with that as he went on CNN to basically, um, you know, go after Hillary Clinton for potentially turning off uh, Biden voters. Take a look. Stephen, great to have you on set. So what do you make of that? Get over it. I don't think it was a very wise statement on her part. <laughs> How did that work out for her in 2016? I think that's something that we have to recognize. Yes, yeah, she won the popular vote, but at the end of the day, she wasn't the president of the United States. It was him. You can look at her not campaigning in Wisconsin in the last days, not campaigning in Pennsylvania in the last days. You can look at some of the stuff that they were saying about her that sort of distracted things from where it should have been in terms of Comey and his report uh, from the FBI. You can bring up a whole bunch of things, but at the end of the day, the last thing you need to do is to do anything that could agitate a potential voter in this particular but election. What do you make about the actual argument that she's making? I mean, she's basically saying two old people, yes, yes. but they're substantively different. I mean, absolutely, has well, one counts against him. Well, listen. If you're Nobody's yeah. brought that up more than me uh, for, yeah. you know, four indictments, 91 counts, impeached twice. I'm not voting for him. I've said that to a lot of people. I've said that to you. But at the end of the day, what I'm saying is, is that at some point in time, you got to take into account what the voters thinking about. The voters, a lot of them out there, tens of millions of them out there, by the way, don't care what he's going through right now. They don't care about his guilt or innocence, his perceived guilt or innocence. They don't care about the 91 counts. They're thinking about their lives. And a lot of times we see politicians taking the positions that they're taking and while we can respect their candor and their honesty they do seem a bit detached at time from what the voters are actually feeling and what the voters are actually thinking nobody wants to hear that from Hillary Rodham Clinton at this particular moment in time because especially if you're Joe Biden what are you really really worried about right now you're worried about folks coming to the polls. You're worried about them showing up to the polls to vote for you. You're not worried even about them voting for Trump. You're worried about them not showing up to vote for yeah. you. That doesn't exactly encourage them to get up out of their seats and go to the polls. Yeah, so you see now you heard that, okay? You notice how Stephen A. once again has to make it clear. I'm not voting for Trump, right? I mean, every single interview... Every single one, he has to come out here and say, 
I'm not voting for Trump. Don't get it twisted. I'm not voting for Trump, <laughs> right? Again, why does he have to do that, right? Why does he have to do that, guys? Why does he have to do that? Well, it's because he is openly criticizing Democrats in a way that you would think, logically speaking, just listen to him talk, that he would vote for Trump, right? But he has to come out and say he's not voting for Trump because he doesn't want to upset his mainstream liberal media handlers, right? Do you guys think that Stephen A. would better have a job if he came out here and said, I'm voting for Trump? Hell no. He would not better have a job at ESPN on first take. They would be having conversations trying to ask Stephen A., why do you support Trump? Trying to convince him not to support Trump. So again, Stephen A. ain't got the cojones to come out here and to say that he supports Trump, even though, again, just listening to what he's saying, the logical conclusion of what he's saying and the things that he constantly is complaining about when it comes to Democrats would lead you to believe that, hey, you're going to vote for Trump, right? And again, he's admitted that the country was in a much better place under Trump, okay? He's admitted that uh, Democrats are doing a disservice with the way they are going about uh, the political persecutions against Trump, the lawfare against Trump, okay? He has admitted that the Biden administration has not been great okay and again if i had to press him i guarantee if i had to ask stephen a smith stephen a which presidency was better take out your personal beast with trump right and the things that he says take that out just on policy just policy for policy who's better trump or biden i guarantee you he say trump guarantee you he say trump but yet again he's coming out here and he's consistently having to make it clear I'm not gonna vote for Trump and that's fine you don't have to you don't have to but I'm just I'm just pointing out I just want to show you guys how much this guy is on a leash right how much this guy is on a leash and how these people in the mainstream liberal media again th there's only a, a certain line they can cross right you can criticize Democrats but if you cross into that line of being a Trump supporter then it's over right it's over and again this is why Stephen A is not crossing that line but with that being said what he's saying about Hillary is right. 100%. Okay, Clear, clearly Hillary has not learned from what happened uh, after her basket of deplorables moment, right? Where she basically tried to say that people who support Trump are a basket of deplorables, okay? Smeared basically half of the country as deplorable people, personally, personally. And for whatever reason, you know, Democrats think that this is a winning strategy, right? To say that you're opponents or the people that support your opponents are racist are bigots well you're just a bad person right you can't be voting for trump because of the policies because of the fact that hey the economy was in a much better place you want a more secure border that you just agree his policies even if you don't like him as a person no 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 no. you have to have some level of bigotry in order to support trump yeah Stephen a is right that's not a winning strategy right that's not something that is actually going to help okay because ultimately at the end of the day for as much as i am confused about individuals who are undecided you know i'm not going to come out here and to say that they're bad people or that they need to get over it what i don't like though are people like Stephen a who pretend to be an independent voter right or a person whose mind can be swayed but when it comes time to actually go to the ballot box and to vote in a way that you would think would be consistent with the things that he says, the criticisms of the Democrats, okay, uh, and him basically admitting that the country is in a better place under Trump from a policy perspective, uh, yeah, those people I think are the problem, right? I, I do have a problem with those type of people, right? I do have a problem with the Stephen A. Smiths of the world because what I think he's doing is cowardly, right? I think that other independents, Okay, I mean, it could very well be that, hey, they may legitimately like some things that the Biden administration has done, but yet they still don't want to vote for them for a certain reason, right? Like, for example, what's happening when it comes to the conflict between Israel and Hamas, okay? I personally think that the pro-Palestinian protesters have been very useful tools, right, in their opposition against uh, Joe Biden and coming out here and saying, hey, we're not going to vote for Biden because of this conflict in which they waged another protest vote in wisconsin recently to show joe biden that hey we might not vote for you right in the general election if you don't do what we say and this is a real threat towards biden and the democrats okay because 
These are the progressive voters, the progressive base of the Democrat Party that is basically about to abandon Biden, right? They're not going to show up to the polls over this issue. And again, the last thing the Democrats should be doing is out here smearing their independent voters, even though, hey, you know, if they want to continue to do that, be my guest. But again, even the cackling hands at The View are admitting that, hey, you know, I'm not necessarily sure if, if this is a, a good idea. Winning their respective primaries in four states yesterday, Connecticut, Rhode Island, New York, and Wisconsin. However, the uncommitted push continues to plague the Biden campaign. Uninstructed, getting more than 8% of the vote in Wisconsin. In Connecticut, uncommitted, tallied a total of 11% of the vote. It's an apparent protest vote in opposition to Biden's response to the Israel-Hamas war. Based on Michigan and Wisconsin results, we know that the protest vote, the sort of ceasefire kind of votes in mm -hmm. Michigan, were more than the margin of victory that Joe Biden won Michigan in 2020. So these, this is very real. And I think that you have a right. I believe a protest vote is part of democracy. Mm -hmm. I think that it's a good way to make your voice heard. Mm -hmm. But I would say to these folks, and these are Democrats, I'm a Republican, take it or leave it. But as an Arab American, you really think that Donald Trump would handle Gaza better no. than Joe Biden. <laughs> If he thought it was politically advantageous, he would level Gaza without a second thought. And I think, unfortunately, we live in a binary world. I'm conflicted right now because I didn't like either option. But you have to think, what are the long-term repercussions for what matters most to you? And I think it would be a mistake for these folks to sit it out because it's not in their, well, not in their interest. Well, people need to understand, he negotiated the Abraham Accords and he moved the United States Embassy to Jerusalem. So he is the most pro-Israel president running right now, more than Biden. So these people on the left who are protesting that, they should at least know that, which is what you're saying, and I'm just reiterating it. Yes. I, and I actually just want to correct, it's approaching Biden's margin of mm -hmm. victory in Michigan. Yes. It's 100,000 votes. Yes. Now, these people who are on the fence, what are you thinking? This is what Hillary's trying to say to people. What are you thinking? There is no choice here. You have a man, Joe Biden is a good person. He understands grief. He's lost a child. He's lost two children. He lost a wife. He, he's compassionate. He feels for Americans. I, this guy, he's a psychopath. Yeah, but I think what Hillary Clinton, it, it is really nice to watch Hillary Clinton not hold back. And for yeah. this reason, we are seeing more of actual Hillary Clinton since she stopped running and actively participating as a candidate herself. Mm -hmm. She's literally saying, obviously, like <coughs> it's a privilege to have more parties. I, as an independent, really wish we had more parties in general, not this election. So I get what she's saying, but at this point, it is get, get over, over yourself. yourself. Yeah. It's a, a bipartisan system. Nothing you can cannot do. change it. I don't think that's going to work in Michigan with really, really angry voters. Well, and I'm on the other side of the but what Yeah, I don't think it's going to work either, right? I do not think that telling the voters that are angry at you that, hey, uh, you're bad because you don't want to go with the default choice of Joe Biden and that, hey, you'd rather just sit it out and not vote. Uh, I don't think this is going to work. But hey, if they think this is going to work, then hey, keep doing it, right? Keep doing it, right? Keep on antagonizing the far left, right? Keep doing what you're doing because, you know, if they continue to do that, then that's a pathway towards victory for Trump. But again, Stephen A is, is right in the sense that, yeah, I mean, these progressive voters, if they don't show out, right, they have a reason not to vote for Biden, then it's over for him, right? He, he's not going to be able to win. And as it looks right now, that's certainly what's going to happen, right? That is going to be the catalyst for Joe Biden's loss, which is the progressive base sitting out. And the Democrats are so dumb that they continue to pour fuel on the fire by basically uh, talking down and trying to scold uh, these progressive voters for not just lining up and voting for Joe Biden. Again, regardless of whether or not I agree or disagree with their reasoning, doesn't matter to me, right? I'm just saying the last thing that you want to do is to uh, talk down to these people who are going to be the key to winning the election. Because, again, if they don't show up, it's over for Biden. So, hey, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.